Next up on Slinging Paint, Breach Storm by Breach Storm Entertainment. We'll catch everybody in the workshop. <laughs> Welcome back, Slingers. We ready for the next adventure in painting? So am I. Alright, so we're continuing with the batch painting on these Breach Storm guys, which are fantastic. I still love, like, the sculpt on the sergeant you know, or the character's head is unbelievable. I have not seen anything that sharp or even really that realistic, even from Games Workshop. Like, these guys, he's amazing. I Let's see if we can get a good close-up of what he looks like. He's fantastic. I love him. But that piece is a separate piece that I'm, wor uh, that I'm working on. Right now we're going to go back to batch painting. And don't worry about it. Um, he'll look amazing when he's all finished. Okay, so after we do... After we get all of the, the, red, the red back into the guys... Uh, some of them I've done, some of them I haven't done, but that's okay. Uh, the next batch painting is going to be the black. And some of, my, some of what I've done, I've done some of these guys already ahead of time. And you can see right here, um, kind of, you know, where the knee joints are and the hip joints are, you can see that I've gone back and I've done them, and I've done them black. As to, you know, make it look like there's an undersuit or, or something else. I even did, even did it into the, into the waist. Um... Again, it's really hard to see with these guys. Let's pull it back a little bit and see if that helps. I, uh, I, lo I lost my sheet of paper, guys, so I'm going to use my hand today. But we'll be back up and running in full strength here soon. So, I don't know. Yeah, just hold on. I can't see anything when I don't have my glasses on. Except when I'm painting. When I'm painting, I don't need glasses because it's kind of awesome. All right, let's see what we can do here. Anyway, you can kind of pick out. There we go. You can kind of see where the where the black is there, and the knee joints and the the hip joints and stuff like that. And I even picked out uh, on one of the other guys. I even picked out some uh, some black parts to uh, to go on the gun. You know. Just give it a little bit more. Give it a little bit more something. Uh, picked out the handle of the knife. I think I picked out some of the handles on the, or some of that, some of the handle on the gun, on his little sidearm. Um, I'm not going to do too much because uh, they don't, they don't really need it. I think they look really, really good, just pretty much as they are. Uh, but if you want to take it to the next level, you can take it to the next level if you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a spare handle that I have here. Put these guys off to the side for now. And uh, I think he's supposed to be the sergeant because he's got his hand up. So we'll do him. We'll do the sergeant. What do you say? And what we're going to do is we're going to start with... Uh, since most of the reds are done, uh, we're going to start into the black. And the black, we're actually going to use the... I thought I might use the medium. Use the medium for, you know, for some of it. Nah, we'll use the small. So we're going to go with the small layer brush. And we're going to take the... The Abaddon for us Americans and Canadians, and Abaddon for those of you across the pond. I'll tell you, that was the weirdest thing I ever heard. Because I was so used to, you know, calling it Abaddon. And then when I watched a painting video from from some guys in the, in the UK, and they called it Abaddon, I was just like, what? Well... That's uh, that's that's kind of cool. So we have uh, two different ways to say the same name, and apparently, 
it's uh, it's confused a few people when they come in to the store because they see the they see the painting videos online and they're like, oh, I I don't I don't have a bad and black. All I have is Abaddon. And well, they're one and the same. So word to the wise out there, it, it really doesn't matter. They're they're both exactly the same color so what we're doing making sure we have that nice crisp point taking a little bit of black and we're gonna go start picking up some details that need that I think just need to be black Uh, when you get your guys, you don't, you know, you don't have to. Uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again to each and every one of you out there. When you paint your miniatures, they're your miniatures. You paint them how you feel. Just because I want to do how the box art shows these guys to be, which is, you know, red. Doesn't mean necessarily that even what I'm doing is going to be exactly the way the box art shows. I like the red. So I'm going to. I'm going to make these guys red. But I also like, you know. Thinking that there's a uh, a black bodysuit or something underneath, something that you know, in between the segments of the armor that uh, that helps them with their mobility. Now this is where you start getting finicky, and making sure that what you're doing is clean. Now, I told you told you guys before that I don't necessarily um, glue everything to everything together at once, and the reason for that is if you can see this guy here, he's he's got his weapon kind of close to his, you know, close to his side, and I want to get in there and I want to be able to paint the um, the you know right here on his ribs or on his torso anyway. So I've just super glued his arm in his in the way or super glued the arm so I can take it off just like that and it allows me access to get where I where I want to be on the miniature again this is just my technique and it doesn't mean that you have to follow the same guidelines if you want to put everything together you Go ahead and put everything together. And if you want to do sub assemblies, you know, like I know some, I know some painters out there like to keep the keep the heads separate and do the heads, you know, on their own before they get glued into place. And that's cool. Everybody's going to do their own thing. Everybody's going to paint their own way. Paint their own colors. Or follow the box art. That's, you know, I've said it before, but that's one of the things that I absolutely love about this hobby you're only limited by your own imagination
Sorry about not talking there for for a little bit. I'm just concentrating and making sure that I'm getting the paint where I want the paint. Yeah. These guys are going to look awesome when they hit the battlefield. Okay, so I've done the done the torso, the hip, and the knee joints. Picked out the handle and the knife in black. I'm going to pick out the... I think it looks like a... Well, to me it looks like a grip. On the pistol. I just can't, you know, I, I just can't say enough about how crisp and clean these guys are. Like, they're just amazing. Okay, so I have the knee joints done, the hip joints done, the torso joint done, which I greatly enjoy. Now, we're going to move on and we're going to do the visor. And I don't know if the... I don't know if we can get in there nice and close. I mean, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you can kind of see there he has got a... He's got a bit of a visor there. So that's got to be picked out in black too. Well, I guess it could be picked out in whatever color you want. I'm choosing black. Don't let me stifle your creative, uh, your, your your creative juices. You pick them out in whatever color you want. I just chose black because it looks really cool against the uh, against the red, and that's what color they chose for their box art. There we go. and see if the see if the camera loves you. Oh the camera loves you baby. There we go. You can kind of see now he's he's got a visor. Of course he does look kind of funny with the with the fun tack instead of an arm, but what are you gonna do? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you know, since this, since this is batch painting, we're going to take his arm, put it back on, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the process for the next the three guys. Pick out all the black that you want that you want out. So for this guy here, I want the clip or the magazine of the gun to be to be black. The forward handle. And I think slide I 
Uh huh. Uh, you know what? Let's do the site on the top. And we'll do. It's almost like a pad or something on the top of the gun. Okay, and that is another color. Shoop. New handle, new fella. It's got a slightly different pose. Looks pretty darn cool. Look, ah, it's ready to kick some arse, I think. start I don't know why I just like to start with the knees since it just seems to be easy Some of this hip done. Trucking along, trucking along, trying to get everybody up to snuff here. You know, I forget that I have these handles sometimes. Sometimes I remember that they're there. These things are great because it helps kind of keep keep your hands off the models. It just helps keep it a little bit. I mean, you're going to have your hands all over these models eventually. But while you're painting them, it helps keep the... Uh, help helps keep the oils and stuff off your hands and keep you from rubbing the paint off until you're done. They also, you know, give you something way better to hold on to than just the uh, 
and then just the base of the figure it actually gives you a nice I mean it gives you a good handle and so and having multiples of these handles allows you to keep your guys especially if you're doing batch painting it allows you to keep your guys on the uh, on the handles without having to switch back and forth you know All right, and take your arm off ah, there goes his arm on that uh, you know is allowing me to get into his visor if you see right basically right where I had my paintbrush was right where his gun was but with the ability to take that one you know take that one part off we don't necessarily run into that problem and, yeah, don't worry when it's time Everything will fit all nice. There we go. And if you do, you know, and if you do find that you run out of handles, because you might only have one or two, you know, you don't have eight or nine, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Does it mean I have two? I have two guys left, and I run out of handles. I've used up all four of my handles, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this cool character guy off for the moment. And we're going to put him on it. And then we're going to do the same for one of the other guys. That's basically just that's just kind of kind of how you do. You just do that, bam, bam. And now you have your two guys on your handles, ready to go. And you are all set. And again, you know, these guys are just absolutely amazing i'm i'm so stoked to uh, to actually break into the other side of the course the other core set uh the i believe that's how it's pronounced zarenthar and those are the uh the feline looking fellas you know my uh my i guess my core of choice and I've started one, uh, but I still have six more to build. Right now we're just concentrating on the Homeworld Confederacy. Uh, when we come back, we should, or I should, not we, because I'm not sure if you're painting along, but if you are, that's cool. Uh, if you're not, that's cool too, if you're just watching. Um, but when we come back, I will have all of the black done. And then we're going to go into some, just a, a few quick highlights of the red, just to make the red pop. Maybe a little bit of, maybe a little bit of uh, highlight on the black again to make that just kind of pop out too. Otherwise, for the most part, you know, these guys are done. I'm going to repaint the uh, the bases black, and uh, let's see where we go from there. All right. So until then. Paint safe and uh, see you around the workshop.